Hello everyone, it's Maureen. I wanted to show you other lucets that I have made, just to show you what different materials that you can work with. Um, this happens to be made out of linen. Now, depending on the thickness of your string will depend on the thickness of your end product. So let's see here. But this is a lucet woven string. This is white linen and I also have red. And I'm also gonna show you how to finish off your lucet cord turns out like this where it ends up having just a single string. Now this end is raw here. You can use something like Freycheck or Fabri-Tac like that on the ends if you end up cutting pieces off of your work. You'll want to, you know, just put a drop of this on there, let it dry, and it dries fairly quickly, um, which will help with your work not fraying as you are using pieces off of your spools. So these happen to be linen, and these three are wool. So these two, I think, are thinner, the red, the white, and the red. Let me see if I have the ends here. Here we go. Let's see. So that's the white. Now the red I have used some, so we don't have the string on this. And I've used the red, I've used this on a doll corset as the um ties and it works great you know yet again you do have a little bit of stretch to it which is nice and then these of course are your three most common Tudor colors red black and white now I'll have quite a bit of collection of red black and, and white just because of what it comes down to but I am working on other colors this is a jute fiber. And I happened to find these balls of jute and I'm like, wow, that's really neat. I wanna make it into a cord. So that's what I did. Here's a better example. When you finish off your lucid cord, this is kind of what it ends up looking like. I'm gonna show you, because the green is nearly done, I'm gonna show you here how to do that. So those are made out of jute. If you made, if you had thinner hemp, this was also what it would look like if you made it into a cord with a lucid fork. And then of course, the blue that I've discussed, which this end up, ends up being silk. I've not used any on, on this yet. And there's what the end ends up looking like. It's actually a really nice and easy way to finish this off. So, all right. So let me put these aside. Here's our green. So we are pretty much all done and I only have this much tail left. There's a knot right here, so it's gonna be easier for me just to finish this off before the knot. So what this involves is pulling this up and moving the loops off the top of the fork and gently pulling the loops through the holes. Technically, you fish it only through the one hole, but I fish it through both if, if it has an additional hole. So now my fork is free. And more or less, what you're doing is you're finding the loop that's been activated, which is this loop, which means you would be creating the loop 
on this side, instead of looping it around, you put your string through the hole I'm going to have to do this the opposite way. So let's try this again. Okay, so fish this back through. Let's start from the beginning here. Okay, so this is the loop that has been activated, the one that wants to slide. So you put your string through the loop and pull. It'll snug down. And then you do the same to the other side. You put the string through the hole and pull. And there it goes. So when it finishes off, then you just have this very nice, neat little end. And you have however much length of leftover. Now I normally use a little bit of a slip knot on my spools to hold these in place. But I'm just gonna wind this on together here. And I'm even gonna wind on the excess string because it's not gonna hurt anything. And there we have it, a complete lucet spool. This is also made of silk as well. I have a few other colors in my bag. And I know that I had showed these before, but it never hurts to have a reminder since plenty of the folks here on our channel are a little new to what I do. These are one ounce two ply silk balls. So basically, I have kind of a gunmetal color here, a bright lime green, and more red, a burgundy color, and a brighter crimsony scarlet color. this kind of silk. I have what they call filament silk as well. And what filament silk is, is it basically is not applied. It's not twisted or really spun into anything at that, this point. It just happens to be straight fibers. Let me think here. And I have several of these going on at once. If you get an opportunity to look at my project bag, you'll see quite a bit of this. But I happen to have some of this here. This is filament silk. Yes, it's an a absolute mess. <laughs> but let me see if I can show you here. That is not plied, it is not spun, it is just straight silk. And here's the cord that I'm making from it. It does vary a little bit and because the silk fibers are loose, what I've noticed with this is it'll the silk will catch on itself a lot more. You may have more mistakes, but your tension is everything when it comes to this. Um, the looser the tension, sometimes the easier it is to work with, but also the looser the braid becomes. And if you're not necessarily wanting to do silk, you could try something like this. 
This is a large crochet cotton. It's two ply cotton. And it creates a cord like that. The thinner the string, the thinner your cord will be. So keep that in mind as you're working. <laughs> but I recently just started this one. So you find the activated side, tighten it down to the middle, then loop around the opposite side. Bottom loop over the top, tighten it in the middle. And you just repeat that for however long you want your cord to be. Or if you're like me, you do the entire ball or length that you happen to have. Now, because I just opened up my new fork, I am gonna put this on my fork. I find this ebony one, and I also have kind of a darker one that's more harp shaped. I find them more comfortable for me. And I do like the ones that have a actual handle too. Like this one is really nice because I can just go ahead and make cord. But if I do it loosely and I don't have to crank down because this has rounded edges, it seems to just go a lot smoother. I noticed, like I have the, the lucets like this and they're square edges. And regardless of, of that, now could I sand them? Sure, but I bought those from an artisan and I don't wanna be changing their original design but I have the ones that I like to use and they tend to have rounded prongs. So I guess you could say sanding is very important when it comes to choosing your lucid forks. And when I was talking about crochet cotton, you can get any kind. This happens to be a gold a little twisted around here. Hold on a moment. This happens to be a gold crochet cotton. Just the same, it's pretty much the same thickness as our black. Maybe a little thicker, but not by much. And it creates pretty nice braid. But I will say, if you get any of the ones like this that have a bit of metal thread in them. Sometimes as you're working, the metal thread will want to separate, which is what's happening here. And you have to be careful because it'll try to snag in your finished work. When I run into a loop of the metal that ends up in my finished work, I take a needle, thread the metal uh, thread through the needle and then sort of weave it back and forth in my finished work. Here's an example where this came loose or broke. Regardless of how loose the tension is, sometimes the metal doesn't want to behave. So if you do choose to go this route, I would wait until you've done a couple projects first before incorporating any beads or metal thread into your lucid projects because you're taking it from beginner level to something a little bit more advanced. Even if you're just doing one cell color like this. But yes, with the metal, I've noticed that keeping your tension even looser prevents the breakage. But granted, you're gonna have a bigger finished product. what that looks like. 
And when I talk about the harp shape, that's what I'm talking about. It looks like a harp, so to speak. And this one has the rounded edges, if you notice, so it's fairly easy to use too. It just happens to be very big. If it wasn't so big, it wouldn't uh, be so difficult. Now, does it necessarily meet, may need to be made out of wood? No, this is made out of horn. I've noticed if you have a darker lucet, you can work your lighter threads on your darker ones. You can work dark on dark, but uh, keep in mind you'll want to have a well-lit area. This is white silk, by the way. So we are creating a nice white silk cord. So hopefully this will end up joining its brothers and sisters later on. And with the horn or bone, they're normally sanded really well and have a finish on them a little bit. So because of that, they tend to not have the problems that wood does. Although, it took me a while to find a horn or antler, one like this that was smooth enough, well not smooth enough, big enough, that um, I felt comfortable using it. Like what, I'm, what I showed you on the filament silk. That, this one is a bone. That is a bone one. But I find that the bone ones tend to be a smaller size. So if you want a larger, you know, more space in between your opening as you work, you do want to shop for size. The, this one is the other one that I enjoy. This is also black silk. It's a, it's just slightly smaller than our cotton that we have right here. And this is the, this is the, my first lucid that I ever purchased. And it is round, it is sanded, and there's even some grooves that have happened on the sides from a little bit too tight attention. So keep that in mind. All right. But just to kind of show you, if it's loose, it actually is easier to work faster. I like, this one is just the right size for me and I have fairly small hands. And I can grab it like this, which I can do the same with, with my ebony one. This is made out of ebony wood. This I believe is made out of a, of a heartwood or walnut possibly. I'm thinking it's walnut, has that correct color and it's solid walnut because otherwise with the grooves it would have shown if it was stained but anyway that's what this one looks like and I don't have too far to go on some of these so I can finish up a few projects pretty quickly I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video today. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. I should be getting back to doing a doll video here pretty soon. I also have three different Tudor dress projects coming up that I just purchased materials for. So those will be coming up this year as well. So plenty to keep an eye on. And don't forget our good friend Dorothy, who happens to be over there. Um, we will be making a green velvet dress and a, like a loose gown to go over top of it in a white tinseled silk. So there's that coming up this year too. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or leave a question in the comments. I'm happy to answer those. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this all the way through. Have a good day. Bye-bye.